You having dinner with your woman by the beach. There's a strong crosswind crashing over the waves. She has on her shortest and tightest dress, so she's sitting close to you so she can stay warm and safe. When the waiter asked her what she wanted, you know what she told him? Crab legs and butter. Here's how to land a plane in a crosswind. Let go! Boom! Crab legs and butter, baby. One time, it's time to land that thing in a crosswind. This is an essential skill to have because the likelihood of you always landing in calm winds or winds that are just straight on, head on for you on the runway are slim to none. It's going to happen occasionally here and there, just depending on where you're flying. But the majority of the time, you're going to be dealing with some form of crosswind. Sometimes it's going to be a significant crosswind. Other times it may be mild and light. So developing this skill can be a world of wonders for you and you're flying in the future. In addition to that, it's just all around fun. Crabbing that thing into the wind. Boom! The first order of business is we first want to understand what exactly is happening with the aircraft doing a crosswind landing and how is it any different than a normal landing. So before, before we can solve for anything, before we can make the proper corrections and inputs, we first must understand what exactly is happening. So just think about your standard landing. You're coming down, you're flying that thing, you're getting ready to float that thing on the runway, looking all nice and beautiful. And let's just say there's no wind at all, it's nice and calm, or maybe there is a nice headwind straight on which is exactly what you want because that headwind will help and aid in slowing you down. So perfect, you come in, there's no really little to no impact or significant impact on the aircraft in these kind of conditions and you can just boom, get into that ground effect baby and land that thing normally. Now, let's just say that there was an actual crosswind and that wind was coming from uh, the right section of the aircraft. So it's coming from this direction right here. What exactly will be happening to the aircraft? In normal conditions, if you were like this and you had a wind coming in like this, what exactly would happen? The aircraft would turn just like this in the exact same direction as the wind. So ask yourself, why is it doing that? Why is the aircraft turning this way? Why is it not turning this way? Why is it not being pushed to the side or anything else? The reason for that is, look at the aircraft and the, and the architecture and the design of it. What's the highest point on this aircraft at this point? It's the tail. The tail is the highest point. So that high point is going to be the most vulnerable in any kind of wind situation. And because it's vulnerable, that wind is going to be cutting and slicing and touching on that highest point. And if you hit the tail on this side, what is it going to do? It's going to turn in that direction. So that is why the aircraft is turning in that direction. If you were to just be neutral on your controls and that crosswind was coming in from the right, it would turn to the right, exactly like that. So how do you correct for that? Of course, add yourself some nice left rudder. And left rudder, correct that, and you'll stay coordinated and right down the pipe. And can continue on with your landing as you continue to progress and get into things. So that's just step one, understanding the dynamic. If, if the wind was coming from the opposite side, it would just do the opposite thing. It would turn right to that wind. You would add right rudder and make that nice correction to keep everything straight. And that is your number one goal when landing in a crosswind. You wanna make sure you always are in command of the aircraft and you're not allowing the wind to take the aircraft where it wants to go, but it's you're taking the aircraft where you want it to go by staying straight and coordinated through that wind. So understanding that initial component, particularly when you're on setup and you're coming down, remember in that sight picture, doing it during your pattern, you got everything right and you're on that final, you wanna make sure you make that correction so you don't end up, you're already in the air, you haven't even begun to get into any kind of ground effect yet, you're just on that final, you don't wanna be like this or you don't wanna be like that, unless you're doing this intentional for any kind of particular maneuver, but for a nice, simple crosswind landing, make it straight. And straighten it out by adjusting the rudder. And remember, the rudder shouldn't be anything new to you because you always wanna be using rudder every time you fly. You just wanna make that part of your natural habits. When you're in the air, you turn with rudder and aileron, not just aileron. So when you're getting ready to land, Rudders is part of your natural input, so you'll just give it a little bit and keep it nice and straight in that crosswind and continue on down the runway. Boom! Check it. You're one step closer to landing an airplane in a crosswind. You understand what that wind was coming from the right side was doing. It was turning that airplane right into that wind. You adjusted because it was touching that tail, so you adjusted with that left rudder. Now you're straight and you're continuing to go down. But as you continue to go down and you got in that little left rudder input and you're staying nice and coordinated with the runway, 
Now another problem is going to start to happen. Now that wind is going to just start to push the whole aircraft and try to get it to drift off the runway to the side. So this is where you have to apply some right aileron. So you already got that left rudder in. Here you go with the right aileron to kind of keep it straight on the runway and kind of keep it coming and getting crabbing into that crosswind, getting everything nice and going, and as you push the aircraft in, and that's exactly what you want to be doing as you're going through. It's going to look almost just like this sight picture right here, where you're almost kind of just leaning into it. You're no longer straight and level a little bit. You're more kind of to the side a little bit, crabbing into that wind, that crosswind, as you're coming down, and you're leaving into that ground effect, baby. We ain't ground effect, baby. Hey. So when you got that thing crabbed into the wind and you're using your left rudder and your right aileron, you want to continue on down the path in the ground effect as you're landing things and getting ready to land that aircraft. You can kind of see how if you're leaning to the side like this, what's going to happen? The side that you're leaning to, that right side, that wheel is going to touch first before the wheel on the left. And that's exactly what you want. When you're crabbing into that wind, you're going to feel a touchdown on that right side. Then the left side will follow and on the mains and then of course the nose will follow thereafter in that order it will be kind of a nice smooth one two three kind of effect don't try to over exaggerate this and do this maneuver you're just focused on keeping that sight picture nice and straight if you're doing that you're doing it correctly because you're going to be crabbing into that wind so don't think about i need to lean the aircraft all exaggerated all the way to the side you're just thinking about keeping it straight but just the mere fact that you're giving it the proper inputs left rudder, right aileron crabbing into that wind, it's naturally going to touch right wheel on the main first, left wheel immediately thereafter, and then nose as you continue to ride out there last. That's exactly what you want, and it's naturally gonna happen as the aircraft slows down and as you're crabbing into the wind. Your main objective, keep everything straight and coordinated by using your hands and your feet simultaneously making sure you're giving it just the right amount of rudder and just the right amount of ailerons if you don't give it enough rudder then what's going to happen it's going to land sideways because you got to use that rudder to keep it straight if you don't give it enough aileron then you're going to want to drift off the runway and not be in the middle so you're maintaining that center line even in a crosswind you always hug that center line like you hug your woman boom remember as your airspeed slows down your controls become less effective so you may have to put in a little bit more rudder or aileron than you're naturally thinking and what you naturally would do at higher air speeds. Always consider that when you're landing an aircraft. When everything slows down, everything becomes a little bit less responsive. Boom, check it, you know the vibes. The secret to any landing is the setup. And the same rules apply to a crosswind landing. You can even double down on that theory and say that it applies even more to a crosswind landing. The setup is key and essential. And the reason why it's key and essential, simply because the crosswind can be affecting you significantly even when you're on the downwind, even when you're on base. Think about this. If you're on downwind and you're going parallel to the runway and you're in that pattern, you're starting to set up and there's a significant crosswind happening, that crosswind can be pushing you closer to the runway. It can also, if it's going in the opposite direction, can be making you have more separation away from the runway, kind of distorting your pattern. When you get on base, the same exact effect. It can be a headwind, it can be a tailwind, all kind of things to make you very high, to make you very low. So that's why it starts with setup. So don't wait to deal with a crosswind until you get on final. Start dealing with it the second you get into the pattern. All of your landings, think about this. Your landing starts the second you enter the pattern and you're already compensating for any kind of wind that may be happening at that time. You're thinking crosswind. Where, what direction is it coming from? How is it gonna impact my pattern and my aircraft? So think about that first and that can help you with the crosswind when landing instead of waiting until you're on final about to land an aircraft, then now you're considering what the winds are doing to the aircraft. Boom! Lastly, think about after your wheels have already touched down. The wind is still blowing, baby. It's still a crosswind. So if you don't stay on those rudder pedals appropriately, what's gonna happen? You're gonna be drifting all down the runway, rocking that thing from side to side. Fly it all the way to the hangar, all the way to tie down. You should be doing this with every landing, 
but it's even more critical with a crosswind. Boom! We slipping and dipping, baby! Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste, and this is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can come for free and fun information for everything that you need to know to become a pilot. And if you're already a pilot, just a fun way to stay proficient and learn and create a community of pilots where we all gang, gang, gang. Hey, love you one time. Let go.